but here it is. I just uh, so I'm done here with my good friend Rob, who is uh, Pierce MKRB I am. on the Pierce YouTube's. MKRB. So went to high school with this guy, known him for years. I have not seen this thing in person yet. So this is my 2001 Roadstar. It, um, it doesn't look much like a regular Roadstar anymore. But it's beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's a nice looking bike. I've done all the work myself. Um, you know, of course, I had, I had some friends over when we were uh, taking off the old front end and, and putting on this new the custom front end. Springer front end there. And yep. And, uh, yeah, I've got some interesting tidbits on here. Uh, this is an uh, Indian Fender from an actual Indian motorcycle. Oh, is it? Okay. That uh, custom put on there. Um, well, one of the things, too, that I wanted to do with this bike, even though it's a Yamaha, Yamaha happened to hit that uh, 1950 styling perfect. Mm -hmm. They just nailed it with the, the angle of all the... The flow of the bike the and the tank. The and, yeah. So everything that I wanted to do with this bike was either enhance or match that flow. And so, obviously, you know, things like Indian fenders have to go on there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Springer front ends, you know, uh, the telescopic uh, front ends didn't happen until late 40s, you know, early 50s, but they were still running Springers. Right. Um, but with modern touches, too, I see the LED indicators. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And they're bright, too. Um, you know, even because... Even though I'm going, you know, for the old styling, I still wanted, you know, the, the modern safety, modern convenience, that sort of thing, too. Uh, but one of the things people do, they put on these Springer front ends and they do one of two things. They run it as a bobber with no fender. Right. Or they run it with the smallest fender they can get away with. And so, as far as I know, I've never seen anybody else intentionally put a giant fender yeah. on a Springer front end. As far as I know, I've never seen it done. But I've got some other touches, like this is a K&N air filter, it's actually for a car that I modified to get fit on here and then um, I attached uh, one of the old engine covers oh, up okay. on the outside yeah. here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed it's a Yamaha, right. um, but you know I wanted clean lines too so I took all the badges off of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm trying to pull this whole black and silver theme in through everything so I've got these different covers with kind of the same Yeah, I was going to say it's nice seeing it not all chromed out. In the, fact, the black ties in really nice. Yeah, I've actually removed a whole lot of chrome. Mm -hmm. um, and and one of the things I've done with this that I've even done on other cars, I like to pull the chrome from the outside and make it all, you know, any chrome needs to be in engineered. Right, right. It needs to be where, you know, it's really shiny in there. And so that's what I've done. I've really pulled it away from the outside. Um, the the black um, the black tailpipes really helped with that. But one of the things I did, I did make a change. These were black covers. Mm. But when I put these tailpipes on here, with this whole thing black, this black gleaming yeah. black, it became a sea of black. Yeah. <laughs> and so I intentionally added chrome yeah, to break, to break up it this up a little area. Bit. I could just see that being a just a black hole over there. Was, yeah. Yeah. Well, and another thing, uh, this is a style decision done by Yamaha, and it was really made to mimic the old oil bags from the 50s. Oh, okay. And so, the, the ones they ran were either chrome or some sort of metal, or, you know, they'd paint them too. So, by adding all the chrome pieces here, this actually looks more like the oil bag. Yeah, the yeah. Too. Um, so I have a, an extended rear fender. Mm -hmm. This is uh, about this much longer than stock. Oh, okay. And I have a reproduction, 1938-1939 uh, Lincoln Zephyr tail light. Okay, yeah. Um, and then also the same bullet tail lights right. here. Um, this came from a place called shinyhiney.com. Uh, those guys, uh, let me tell you, if you ever want anything for a bike or for a car, they are fantastic to work with. Hmm. Uh, just give them a call. They'll, they, they love Set what they you up do. with whatever, yeah. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, I've done a couple other things like, uh, I know it's dirty right now, but um, this is actually the stock um, belt guard, but it comes chrome, I, so I ground down the chrome and I, I painted it up nice and black, mm -hmm. but um, Roland Sands Designs has a set of um, belt guards for Harleys that have holes drilled them. And of course, you know, they cost about, you know, 300 bucks. Right. <laughs> and so I went ahead and said, you know, I could do that. Oh, yeah. And so I, went, are easy. <laughs> I made a series of progressive holes <laughs> here yeah. in black just to make it a little custom. Okay. And again, with all the black covers on this side, um, I also took, there, there was the, um, 
uh, fuel pump and everything used to hang right here. Right. I, I moved that up under the, the side cover on the other side, mm -hmm. which gave me about, oh, I want to say about five more foot of hose, which is probably about a good 30 miles worth of gas on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. The speedometer, my grandfather was a mo motorcycle police officer in LA um, back in the late 40s, early 50s. Mm -hmm. And so I took one of the speedometers uh, from that bike and it used his only goes up to 80 mm -hmm. but the font we matched perfectly uh, where mine says Roadstar his said Harley Davidson oh, okay. but then the police special is exactly as it's very cool so I've got that as a tribute there huh. um, one inch handlebars I've got uh, new Arlen Ness um, uh, grips on here right. Arlen Ness mirrors uh, and of course you know even with all this I'm not done. Oh, and it's never ever done. No. So what size motor is this? It's a 1602cc. Okay. So it's a big one. 1.6 liter. The car I'm thinking of buying next year has a 1.4 liter. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Fuel injected? No, actually is it's it carbureted. carbureted? Oh. Uh, what year is this one? Uh, 2001. Oh, okay. You probably said that earlier, but... Yeah, the... Um, the newer road stars, they're all they're all carbureted. Oh, are they? They're not carbureted. Uh, fuel oh, fuel injected. Okay. Um, and, but I, I enjoy having a carburetor on. There. I like the flames there on the. This is another thing I did. Uh, this this part I've never seen anybody do this. I painted these with a high heat black. Uh huh. Uh, just to make them stand out, um, they come in chrome and they don't offer them in black. Right. They don't offer them in any other color. So uh, everybody I've seen has these. They they have them in chrome. chrome. You can't yeah. see them because yeah. the the push rod tubes are chrome. Because yeah. So they're just barely there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, just, that, that really, I, again, it breaks up the chrome in there and it, it just looks uh, good, especially with that that silver, uh, I guess that's a painted, uh, yeah. your, your heads and whatnot, or is that just yeah, the bare? Yeah, this is just paint. Okay. Yeah, it's the aluminum paint on there. Yeah. Well, the next question is, yes. what's it sound like? Wow. Well, if I had the keys, I would, oh, I would well, show you. But, well, we uh, can always pause the camera. If we need it's to. loud. That's okay. But not too loud. These, these <laughs> actually are a little quieter than the old uh, types I used to have on here. Now are these uh, chambered? Or they, I mean, is, it a, is that an actual muffler then? Or is it just yeah, a straight yeah, pipe? Yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got baffles on the oh, inside okay, here. Okay. Uh, it's three inch exhaust, uh, which is bigger than my Camaro. <laughs> well, we'll fix that. <laughs> we'll, fix that we'll fix that. So we're gonna, that's going to be the next video here. Alright, so. let me grab the key. Okay, I'll stop this for a second. <laughs> This is 96 Corvette Admiral Blue. Admiral Blue. And if if you know anything see. about this guy, that's the only color he ever talked about once we saw our first 96 Corvette at what was that, the Dublin Chevrolet dealership in California? And do you remember what happened at that? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> couldn't reach the pedals on a certain 96 Grand Sport Corvette. So they had it, I don't know if they had the battery disconnected or what on there, but the seat was electric and I couldn't adjust it. Yeah. So as I sat in it, it was adjusted all the way back. Now, I sat in it, our good buddy Steve, who's about my size, sat in it. And Rob's not quite as tall as the rest of us. And uh, yeah, hey guys, I, I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> well, ever since then I've been obsessed with the color and do not be surprised if the Camaro ends up Admiral Blue. I, I would actually expect it. Yeah. But, yeah. but I don't know if the camera can pick this up. The, it, it's really dirty right now, but can you see the metallics in there? I can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just out here on the side. I mean, it really picks it up. And there's actually uh, a bit of pearl to it. Yeah. 
And with that black, it really, really just sets it off. Yeah. And I could have gone really crazy. A lot of the guys I'm in bike shows with, they had you know, crazy flame jobs, all yeah. sorts of pinstriping. I went really simple, and I don't even have anything between the two colors. Yeah. I don't believe Chevrolet did either with the with any of the Grand Sport parts. Did they on the with the white stripe? Did they have anything? No. The only through? thing they had was the two red hashes on the fender. Yeah. So you know, I so I mean, you know, maybe a real fine red pinstripe, but you know, then that might just add that that'd be almost too much. Yeah, I'm worried about throwing another color. I've, yeah. I've debated throwing a thin. Um, a thin silver. Look. I was gonna say silver would look good. Silver or dark gray, like a charcoal gray or something. But one of the things, e even though it's not as flashy as a lot of paint jobs, again, I'm going with that classic theme. Mm -hmm. And the colors coming out of the factory for motorcycles, they were not crazy. They, yep. were, they were, you know, nice and simple. So that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted it this way. Well, that's one thing I've kept, uh, you've showed me the pictures of the parts and they were kind of on the bike and I kept wanting to see this thing in the sunlight because you were showing me pictures from inside the garage. Yeah, it looks yeah. cool, but I want to see this thing in the light. Now you can look at this back fender right here and you can see how deep that goes. Yeah. It is a very, that's probably one of my favorite blues. Definitely one of my favorite blues. I and mean, there are times, depending on the sunlight, it looks purple. Mm -hmm. and there are other times it looks bright blue. There I can actually... I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you know, you've got the blue on top of the tank, the black underneath, and along where the blue is, it's got a purple hue to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I really love this color. So, anyway, did you get the sound on the camera earlier? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Recorded it and got you over here, so. Um, a, lot of, a lot of little things I want to do yet. We'll get there. Oh, yeah. The, the, the neat thing is, I don't have to do anything now. And so, I can focus my attention a bit. Right, yeah, yeah. Own. You can play with this when you want to, but yeah. this is this is my daily driver. Now I'm going to be picking up another motorcycle soon. Who oh, are you? Yeah, it's probably going to be a late '70s uh, Honda 754 cylinder. Oh, cool! But the neat thing is, the guy I'm getting it from has another frame for it. It's an Amon frame, uh -huh. and uh, if you know anything about those, they were chopper frames from the '70s. So it's a vintage chopper frame. Oh, cool! Uh, they they look neat they have uh, uh vertical springs in the back oh yeah okay the yeah uh, they just they look great so i can't wait to maybe get a hold of that and uh build a nice new custom That's, bike yeah and he does videos on occasion so you know i do i do i'm, I'm trying to do throw more. throw his his uh site on your uh, favorite list there and absolutely i'd love more viewers yeah Love people who uh, would comment on my videos to yeah. say whether or not, hey, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. <laughs> well, you'll get a lot of those. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I get a lot of those. Hey, you need to do it this way. Eh, it's mine. I had one guy on one of my videos the other day uh, when I switched out the exhaust for this. He said, what good is this video that you have on there? You didn't, you didn't go step by step on how I to know. do this. There are four bolts. Uh -huh. And basically, they come <laughs> off. And they go on. Uh, no, I don't know what this guy needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what? I have a guy at work. I don't think he watches YouTube, so Don, if you're watching, I apologize. But he asked me, when you're tightening a bolt, which way do you turn it? Oh. You, uh... I said, I don't know. You crank it around. If the nut falls off, you flip the little handle and you go the other way. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the idea. <laughs> No, this is a very, very nice bike. Oh, you. And you did a photo shoot with a magazine recently? I did a photo shoot with uh, a gentleman named Jason who runs Jailbreak Photography. Okay. Um, and the whole purpose of the photo shoot was to get pictures to go into Road Bike Magazine. And they haven't set a, a published date or anything like no, that? No, in, um, in fact, I have all the digital files and we're, we're still just working on oh, it. Okay. When you find out when they're going to publish the photos, let me know. I'm, I'm pick up an, an issue with that. And, so that is a very, very nice bike. I've been wanting to see this thing in person ever since you sent me those first few pictures of the painted parts. Let me tell you about one wild thing I want to do. See the, the hard oil lines here. Yeah. And here's the transmission. And well, the transmission, it comes up underneath here, and there's a fill tube, an oil fill tube. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the Roadstars, they don't use transmission fluid. They actually just use the engine. The crankcase oil, yeah. 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 And so the, the tube and everything's up in here. Well, 
there are guys that go out there and they put a flat plate on top and they run steel braided line to the top of the flat plate and then you move your electronics up under here and so what you can oh, okay. do is actually remove everything from underneath to have a nice clean open area right yeah sweet all sorts of things to play with yeah you know, the sky's the limit on these just like building a car absolutely what can you think of that nobody else has done and that's what i try to do yeah well plus you know What's unique about this build, well not unique, is it's it's a daily driver. It's not uh, it's not a trailer queen. I right. can't do anything that would make it unrideable. Because yeah. Because I ride it. Yeah. And that's what's really impressive is you know it, it's nice to see the fancy custom stuff, but get out and enjoy it. Exactly. You know, hey, I got this bike and I take it from my garage and I put it in the back of my truck and I take it to the show and I don't even fire it up and I wheel it to the booth and I, you know wipe the dirt off the tires because I got a little scuff on them when I was rolling it in. You know, I put carpet down when I roll it into the booth and all that. Yeah, no. yeah it's kind of nice to see some of that stuff, but I like seeing stuff like this on the road. Those are so. those are works of art that should, are just works of art, not, not real vehicles. <laughs> Maybe uh, one of these days I'll have to loan you my GoPro. Oh yeah, you that'd be fun. Strap that on this thing in different locations. We could mount it probably right up under here. Just yeah. put a bracket in between this. Well, they come with uh, adhesive mounts. Oh, yeah. So, and, and it's 3M, so I mean, it'll stick to anything and it peels off. Oh, yeah. Because I'm thinking of picking up a second small camera like that. So I could shift one down here and let you borrow one of them. And, you know, you could mount it there. You could put it on the front of the fender looking back at you. I mean, I can, I'm seeing the, the trash oh, yeah. bars here. You know, you could probably put something on the, the swing arm here looking down or even looking back. I mean, there's... The hardest part is coming up with different ways to mount those things, but but yeah. So hopefully all the viewers enjoy this. We'll go ahead and end this part of the video, and so we don't make it too long. Too long. <laughs> and then I'll try to remember to throw a link to your site, or at least throw your name in the description. And that's Pierce MKRB Capital P. And I mean, yeah, here's me. <laughs> and then Capital M, Capital K, and Capital R, Capital P. That is so. it. Alrighty, well we'll go ahead and shut the camera off here and hope you all enjoyed this one. So